Welcome, you're joining us. Uh, this is uh, Menjelang Setahun Malaysia Baru. I'm your host, Ibrahim Sani. Today, we shall examine the whole conversation surrounding 5G. This is because Malaysia is set to be amongst the first in Asia to showcase 5G. And joining me is the chairman of MCMC, uh, Al Ishal Isha. Uh, thanks, uh, Ishal, for joining us. I think uh, uh, roughly Malaysians are fully aware that 5G Advent is now uh, bearing upon us and we are extremely proud to be amongst the first nations in Asia to be uh, equipped with 5G. Uh, let's recap a little bit about why 5G is extremely crucial for the development of the country. Thank you, Ibrahim. It's a pleasure to be here. So, we started in November last year, the 5G Task Force. And the 5G Task Force today comprises of 64 organisations, industry, academia, government, companies, associations like the Federation of Malaysian Manufacturers, etc. Because 5G literally impacts every level of society. So we brought the teams together, the organisations together, including, by the way, the army, the police force, etc. etc. And then we've got four working groups looking at industry, regulatory, spectrum, and business case. Jadi, the whole idea of touching lives and industry and making that mega shift across industry 4.0 over the next couple of years has started here in Malaysia. Beginning with this task force and there are many other initiatives going on across ministries and uh, institutions. Uh, to impress upon the viewers at home, the, the conversation is on how fast Malaysia is going to adopt this, right? Because when I went to Las Vegas, that was in January, that was like four months ago. And we see America among the first countries in the world to actually adopt 5G. In fact, they are themselves uh, trying out or rolling out the uh, trial phase. Uh, the only company that is rolling out at the commercial level is Verizon and they only have one house running uh, 5G currently. Literally one house in the entire state of Amer in the entire country of America. We're not that far behind, right? We're four months behind. We're absolutely not that far behind. Last week, Korea launched their commercial 5G network on April 3rd. Uh, the rest of Asia are still in test bed and showcase format. Across the world, the World Radio Congress, WRC, is ratifying 5G standards. So this comes about spectrum. So there's low-end spectrum, mid-band spectrum, and the high-end millimeter-wave spectrum. All this is still in the process of ratification in the next 12, 18 months. Equipments are being prepared from devices to sensors to network equipment and so on. And then you've got this industry applications and showcases. So Malaysia is in fact right up there when it comes to looking at you know, how do we leverage on technologies to essentially, it's not just technology. This is about moving the economic needle, moving our GDP, moving our exports and being competitive as a nation, leveraging on connectivity and 5G networks. I think no one here is going to doubt the upside of 5G, a faster broadband, better connectivity, um, assessment towards SME and how this can improve the small and medium enterprise sector. The problem here lies on the execution and also on the hiccups. Uh, it can be small road speed bumps or it can be devastatingly large roadblocks that needs to be navigated well in terms of regulation, in terms of many others. What do you think is the biggest threat for Malaysia in rolling out 5G uh, before it hits commercialization? In fact, this, this inclusiveness has been emphasised and emphasised every day by our Minister of Communications and Multimedia, which is uh, Yang Berhormat Tuan Gubeng Singh Dio. He's always emphasised from day one, be inclusive, include everyone. Hence, the task force has got 64 organisations. Now, imagine in a room, with 64 organisations trying to move towards a certain direction. You can just sense the challenge there. But it's a challenge that we are undertaking. It's a challenge that we know that by, working, by breaking into working groups, we can achieve much more. Now, the stumbling blocks include local governments, include uh, industries. While a majority of our industries are SMEs, SMEs are also potentially not financially able to adopt new technologies and, and progress with the times, etc. So hence the government has formed and announced a couple of interesting funds and grants in order to stimulate the adoption of technology across industries, particularly SMEs. And then when you look at the larger organisations, 
uh, the transformation required is also massive from our Tanaga Nationals to Petronas, etc., etc. So we are touching on multiple facets and groups of industry uh, driven by policy. And this is where government policy becomes extremely important and one of them is driven by MCMC. The stumbling block that I can see, and I take, I, I take note of, of, of uh, the actors involved in getting this uh, uh, job done, but the key highlight that I want to focus on is also on government involvement. Mm -hmm. Do you agree that uh, too much government involvement in something as big as this might be detrimental to the rollout phase of 5G? Um, do you think that something of a light touch is required, not too much of government intervention? Absolutely. The government's role is not to be in business. And I think our Prime Minister, our Minister has repeated that over and over again. We set policies, we see 10, 20, 30 years down the road and carve the pathway for industry, society, the economy to transform and migrate towards what's there. The government should not be in business and we are not in business. So as of that, when it comes to connectivity and 5G and the fourth industrial revolution, what we've done is we have a policy action plan called the National Fiberization and Connectivity Plan. The NFCP sets targets. The cost of broadband to the home would, should be no more than 1% of GNI by 2020. Okay. We will have gigabit internet at state capitals, etc. 70% of schools, of uh, post offices, of police station, of state libraries ought to be fiberized etc etc yeah so we these goals drive the industry investments but rolling out nfcp could be an entirely new matter altogether as a chairman of mcmc how do you want to convey the message on, a, on FC, uh, nfcp to the public particularly on how the public can accept nfcp and better understand what this is all about thank you ibrahim i think we should start the starting point is why is connectivity important so the world bank report highlights that a 10% increase in broadband penetration, fixed broadband penetration, will translate to a 1.38% increase in GDP growth. In Malaysia, that's tantamounts to approximately 18 billion ringgit with a 10% increase. So while we have a blended broadband penetration in Malaysia of 121%, that is predominantly uh, coloured by mobile. Only 30% of households have fixed broadband in Malaysia. So the gap is there. Hence, when YB Gobind Singh Dio announced and launched the, uh, announced the NFCP, the goal is to increase penetration of fixed broadband around the country, create better connectivity at a high quality and affordable price across consumers as well as industry. The tagline that the minister used at that time, and perhaps still holds true, is he wants to double the speed at ha and half the price. Is that part of NFCP? That is our war cry. Uh, I wouldn't say it is part of NFCP, but it is one of the themes of why the NFCP is required. And we have achieved a tremendous goal. On average, 49% of fixed broadband prices have dropped up to December 2018. And that's phenomenal. And now we are seeing uh, speeds of up to one gigabit per second in Malaysia, which was historically unheard of. That's 1,000 Mbps. 1,000 Mbps, right? Today, as of 2018, we've got 1.2 million households who have access to 100 megabits per second. That number was in the tens of thousands just five, ten years ago. So the progress of the government to drive or catalyze this investments and this direction by the telecommunication service providers becomes a key impetus because this translates directly to economic growth. One of the key elements on NFCP is that the entry level fixed broadband package uh, should be at 1% by next year. Next year yeah. is not that far off, it's just three quarters away. It's not that far and we're within, we're within the band, right? As we can see, the drop in price today, you can get 30 max for 79 ringgit, you can get 100 max for 99 ringgit, and your 500 max for 179, etc. Oh no, actually, certain telcos are offering one gig at 179. Mm. That's unheard of in Malaysia. Now, mobile packages are also very, very aggressive with uh, high quotas. And as our mobile telcos fiberize the towers, essentially 4G LTE Advance can deliver 100 megabits per second and beyond. 
So it is important for the government to have this action plan and key targets which will then stimulate and catalyze investments by the industry and that's ultimately the most important. Is it true about the rumblings amongst industry players that they feel that the government's targets are a bit too lofty uh, and perhaps even too dear of a cost for them to bear? So this is interesting. The NSCP, based on our internal calculations, will cost approximately 19.4 or 20 billion ringgit. The government is looking at ways to stimulate and invest that in the right areas and those announcements will be forthcoming by the government over the next couple of weeks or a month even. Uh, the idea is to provide platforms and resources to the underserved areas, to organisations and institutions that would need or segments of society that would need some kind of stimulus. At the same time, as you know, our telecommunications companies already invest one to two billion ringgit each per year since the beginning and I think that investment will total to about 8 to 10 billion uh, just in one year alone when you combine all the investments in fiber, uh, BTS, towers, etc, etc, capacity building and all that. So I think in terms of resources, the government is also putting its money where its mouth is. The details will be announced in due course in a mm. couple of weeks. Mm. Uh, industry is already investing but what we have now are you have to have a moonshot in order to achieve the goals. See, the problem of holding such a position such as that of the chairman of MCMC is that while you have your bread and butter issues, the day-to-day -day kind of conversations that you must have with the government, with industry players, with consumers, there's also an added element that I'm pretty sure that wasn't stated black and white on your CV, and that is of managing expectations of the public, of the consumers. I, I may not have raw data on how dissatisfied people are mm -hmm. with broadband speed, but you know, a quick check on social media, and I don't know. I know, I, you know, I know that social media is not a good barometer, but enough checks on social media would show that people are generally dissatisfied with broadband speed, not just in Malaysia but around the world. Indeed. People are just, you know, it's an easy target for them to gripe Absolutely. on. Absolutely, indeed. Now, social media is an important barometer in any case, right? We have in Malaysia the challenge of streaming, which is copper. So I think a lot of the uh, complaints and issues has come from the segment that is getting up to 8 megs per second, but still paying the high price due to the copper uh, network. The government takes fact and is cognizant of this and is working very, very closely with Telecom Malaysia. And I think you'll also see some announcements coming up in the very near future where we intend to address the streaming issue per se. Now, moving back to 50,000 feet, Malaysia, fixed broadband, we have moved from 56 last year in UCLA's rankings to 32. Our average fixed broadband speed is now about 66 megabits per second, moving from 20 plus megabits per second. So the average has, is also skewed because of the faster speeds on fiber, etc. The government recognizes this. And the two key initiatives is one, to address the streaming issue uh, with Telecom Malaysia. We have solutions. I've spoken to TM, me and my team, to Telecom Malaysia's management. Uh, we've had multiple meetings with Telecom Malaysia's new chairman and that is front and center in our day-to-day -day work. Second, fiberization of towers. Because I'm sure you have experience, being in an area, you mm. see 4G signal, but you're still getting sub 10 megabits per second. Ookla is actually one of my top apps on my home screen. Likewise, likewise, and open signal, etc. Yeah. Right? So the idea of 4G equating to speed is not entirely true. Because there needs to be fiber to the towers, there needs to be proper rationing in the gateways, the internet uh, peering centers, our international gateways, that whole value chain. And this is where the NFCP comes in. The NFCP is not just looking at last mile connectivity, but end-to-end -end connectivity. From our policies on international gateways, investments, peering centers, fiberization of towers, all the way to the core network of the telcos. One of the more important uh, influences uh, in the space of technology is MKBHD, uh, Marquez Brownlee. Um, and he uh, took a picture of the, his own screen that says uh, 5G Verizon. But at, then he also shows the speed of it, which is 5 or 
six uh, MBPS. MBPS yeah. And he argues that this kind of conversation is actually detrimental to the consumers because then the consumers would build a perception that 5G isn't really that fast. And he blames Verizon for it. Correct. And do you think that that kind of argument might uh, exist here in Malaysia once 5G is rolled out? There's two parts to this coin. One is 5G in the US is a little bit different. I think, as you know, it's a country that is extremely savvy in marketing. So the idea of 5G in the US may, depends on the telco, etc., may not be totally 5G. They're just equating it to the next generation. But yes, so this government is very cognizant and savvy. We know that the element of 5G and the frustrations that can come with it could be a key impediment of appreciation and even industry adoption. Hence, the NFCP, looking at end-to-end, -end, looking at clearing the choking points and the pathways, looking at working with local governments. Remember, land is a state matter. And the state governments are in control of how fast, how well we can put in fibre in the ground and put in towers with fibre uh, to deploy 4G advanced, LTE advanced as well as 5G. So this multi-party, multi-stakeholder collaboration, we are clear and we are not running away from. Whether or not there will be issues, etc. going forward, I think time will tell. But rest assured and believe me, we are doing our best every day to bring all the relevant stakeholders into the picture, including investors, including the fund managers, mm. including analysts, etc. Because this is an economic drive more than a technology drive. The slide that we're looking at right now hits a lot of uh, sectors, uh, agriculture, automotive, manufacturing, you name it, right? Indeed. But, but I want to ask you one simple question because sure. we're running out of time here. How soon can consumers at home, not industries, but consumers at home, people like you and me, will receive 5G? We're looking at 2021 to 2022 as a commercial rollout of 5G for most parts of the world. It could be slightly earlier or it could be slightly later. The idea of 5G touching consumers at home is, if I may say, slightly uh, less important or on par with 5G in industry. As you saw the eight verticals that we are fo focusing on, for example, manufacturing, uh, agriculture, etc. The sensors, the robotics, the AI, the machine learning, the 3D printing, etc. Those are more equally or more important uh, achievements uh, in terms of implementation or 5G networks in order to move the economic needle and the growth of the country's GDP uh, going forward. All right, uh, that was my conversation with the chairman of MCMC, Alishal Isha. Uh, remember, on um, April 18th until 21st, there is a 5G uh, convention that is taking place uh, and it will be launched by the Prime Minister um, at uh, Precinct 3 Putrajaya. And Alishal was speaking about the kind of events that are going to take place there, including that of the test bed of uh, 5G network itself. A lot of industry players are going to be there from front and industry players like all the telcos, um, DGU Mobile, Maxis, Cellcom uh, and many others as well as Black and Telcos, uh, Huawei, uh, ZTE, Nokia um, and I'm going to offend some corporates because I didn't mention all of them but many of them are going to be there. Um, remember 5G showcase at Putrajaya on April 18th until 21st. Be sure to be there if you are interested to understand a little bit better about 5G um, experimentation in Malaysia. Remember, Malaysia is set to become amongst the first in Asia to showcase 5G.